Alrighty, so immediately after um, I had my last uh, cell phone break incident at at um my evil landlord's house in Wilson, PA, um, I had went straight to the Wilson police and then forwarded them all the information that I had sent to the state compliance boards, which I got all the letters back for, which I had most recently showed you. And yes, um, the state troopers are under a uh, heavy investigation because ever since the state troopers contacted my distant family members in Texas, my brother-in-law has been having angry fits and seizures that fall right in line with everything that's been happening with me, minus the seizures. Now my brother-in-law has to go to uh, multiple doctors and he had to have headgear put on his head and um, and wear it for two weeks just to map, just to see what was going on in his mind and they still can't figure it out ever since these state troopers contacted my family, that family. So now, since then, I had given these Wilson police um, some information on the neighborhood that um, I knew and not only did I give it to them, but I gave it to them with detailed instructions on how to uh, do this. Well, and if that the, the police that are following, they will notice too that it all falls in line with my numbers twos and sevens as well. So I gave them if I gave them access to my Google Photos, and I posted all the information with detailed instructions over photos, over map overlays. So I pull up a map on Google. And I put X marks to spot and I put this person is there with this and they know information about the next person in line. So I gave them a small time weed and mushroom dealer that should just get a slap on the wrist because he's just a young high school kid. But this is this is what starts the chain of events. And now this individual knows all the information on another individual who from his mouth alone and I've. I've witnessed this myself. Um, he is on a larger scale. He sells LSD, mushrooms, processed dabs, and large amounts of marijuana in the pounds, the pounds range. Um, he picks up dabs on and dabs are processed um, extracted dabs. I know all about them. If you go to Chris J Cash 27 on Instagram. This was one of my jobs. I was working legally out in the um, Oregon area and Seattle area when I was being trained by my alchemist. Um, now, um, this individual was able to purchase these items um, cheaper than I was able to get them in, in a commercial environment. So this really like threw me off for a second because yes, I asked him, asked this individual how much he would purchase them for. Well, now this individual that's doing it on a larger scale, he is also a high school, um, like uh, young adult. He's in his younger 20s, maybe 21, 22 years old. So we don't want to ruin anybody's lives. No, or at least I don't. So the reason uh, I am gifting this information to the police is because I always give someone an out. The small time weed dealer can give information on the larger scale weed dealer who's also a younger person who's selling large amounts of LSD and dabs and large amounts of uh, marijuana. Now, this individual's neighbor, I was told word of mouth from the friends of the larger scale LSD and dab and marijuana dealer that his neighbor is a kilo cocaine dealer of the neighborhood. So now this individual can reciprocate information on his neighbor. And I believe his neighbor may possibly be own a tree trimming business. Um, I do not want to say any information publicly. Um, the police have all this information with detailed pictures on my on my Google Photos, which I gave them access to. If they don't go and do this, I don't know why. Um, they should. I've literally handed them this information as a bartering tool so they know that I'm a good individual and I don't want anything to do with anything illegal. Okay. 
Also now too, my evil landlord that I just moved out of Wilson for, and I'll have to contact my probation officer today and let him know I moved because it's been 48 hours now. And I think I have to tell him in 48 or 72 hours. So I'll do that immediately after this video. Um, he is using the methamphetamines and crack cocaine. And he is also middlemanning things. And that's how he's making his money because he uh, lost his union job as an electrician. So, but this individual, not only does he have neighbors that have kids, he's on these synthetic devices that make his mind empathic and he's messing up the neighborhood. Um, but because of this, he also lives four blocks. He's in a four block radius of an elementary school. The elementary school that's on um, uh, Butler, Butler and Wilson. Yeah. And also St. Luke's Hospital. He's within two blocks from it. So you don't want individuals like this wheeling and dealing drugs. I gave all the information they need um, on my Google Photos to remove him uh, by means of the IRS. He has created, he has done all different kinds of uh, evading taxes, both on his houses, his property, and renter's tax. And he's also done insurance fraud um, using his vehicle, a dent, he put a dent in his vehicle to collect $2,000 and use my phone to take pictures. And his vehicle is also, and his VIN number is also because of that he used my phone personally to take pictures and it uploads it automatically to my Google Photos. So just by default, it's accidentally there. Um, now, going back, there's also two, there, uh, just to put the cherry on top, my, me and my family grew up in Bristol, PA. Um, another person who has, um, uh, I also left information there on the whereabouts of a ring, a ring of tweakers, tweakers as in meth, methamphetamine users that dwell in my hometown in Bristol. And I heard that that is a turned into not so good of a town. Um, if you go back and cross check my text messages, to when I text messaged my father back over a year ago to my father's always had the same cell phone. When I messaged him, if you pick up the geolocation of the cell phone I text from that says, hey, dad, do you want any metal shelves? Because my dad was looking for shelves for his garage and these tweakers had shelves. You will find the location of the of the shop where these tweakers dwell. OK, and now these tweakers. I don't believe they're doing anything malicious in town, just using drugs. So you may use them to find all the other drug dealers in town. They will cascade out like this. And now too, my old boss, Dennis Gordon, me and him were actually personally friends before all this happened. I believe there's something fishy there. Um, a test, a test could be Dennis has a, has a, a person who he knows and he purchases marijuana off of that um, grows marijuana. And his son is also processing dabs illegally in their garage. Um, let's see if Dennis Gordon will barter that tool off or barter that person off as information. And I believe that I believe the crooked law enforcement, honestly, were setting Dennis up and making his family look like they were mob. I don't you know. I was his friend. I know I could deep read people. I don't believe, I believe that the law enforcement was setting me up against Dennis. But then again, Dennis did walk me into the courtroom. Dennis did have the state trooper on the phone when we got there. Dennis, the state trooper manipulated me to walk myself into the courtroom and then put me in jail for four months in one day. And then they controlled me synthetically and extracted all of my thoughts in jail with algorithms that make my thoughts pump out of my mind, which is crazy. I know it's crazy to hear. It was torture. It was heinous. It hurt me. It, it was bad. It was very, very bad. And I believe they're using these devices, law enforcement on other individuals in the neighborhood. And it is horrible. I've also been told by a Lyft driver that I, a local police officer pulled her over and now her vehicle just disappeared. The officer said he never pulled her over. Um, she was placed in jail. 
And then when she got out of jail, there was no vehicle. And the officer said he never pulled her over, which is really weird. It was the only lift ride that I took from Julie LeBout's Cedar Point location back to my Wilson household. And this, this individual was a female named Devin. Um, and now she's living out of her car with her doggy and pay, using Lyft and Uber to pay for her vehicle because she can't find her vehicle because the, the cop said that she had the wrong name on her ID because the DMV printed the wrong name. Yeah, I know. Very, very upsetting. I know. And also too, when I was, when I was in intake, uh, the officers here in the area, the individual that I was in intake with in cell K3, um, this individual, they were looking for his brother and they checked his ID, knew he was not the individual they were looking for, but they arrested him anyway. And then his probation officer said, hell no, this is not true. And his probation officer had to come in after him being arrested for three days and release him back on probation. This is not good, guys. This is not, not good. Are the police going to move on these individuals that I get the information for? I do not know. That's why I'm making it public, because I do not feel safe in this environment. I feel like they are entrapping me. I know they're entrapping me. I'm just trying to be nice here. They are legitimately entrapping me. And now, from here, I will backtrack and, and explain why I don't have a license. And in the next video, I will be going moving backwards. I will move backwards and then tell my temporary story forward that leads up to it. And I'll do it again backwards and tell my temporary forward forward that leads up to it. Because I found out when you tell a, a story forward and these people are manipulating you, all your stories cascade out this way and that way into different avenues. But if you tell a story backwards, it makes it a lot easier to understand and trace the story and trace the facts. Because then all the bullshit facts where they try to mislead you are just sitting on the side. And now they're just pieces of evidence for the people who manipulated you.